Short week this week. Um, not great numbers, really. Uh, managed to pull it out of the bag at the end of the week with uh, a long trip and a hotel stay. But uh, not the greatest week, but we'll see how it goes. Hi everybody, David here, Anvil Logistics. Welcome to a new week on the channel. And it's now Tuesday, it's the 10th. And it's uh, half past four in the afternoon and we are heading home. There's heavy traffic just near Manchester Airport. So we didn't work yesterday, Monday, because we had a nice long weekend, me and my good lady wife. And we actually got some nice weather for a change as well, as you can see by my beautifully tan features. We were on the coast and uh, it was actually sunny for a change, which made a lovely break. So I've come back in to work today. I've done some work for me, regular customers. They're not as busy as they were. Uh, I think there's been a few changes uh, and I think some of their customers are consolidating and having a look at what they're spending on transportation, etc. Anyway, the upshot is they're not as busy as they were, so, but I have been doing other things besides working for them. But today I've been doing some air freight work for them, which um, is not the greatest paying work in the world, but it gives me um, a day's money and uh, keeps me ticking over. So I've basically been into the airport, picking up some freight, delivering that to customers, and then doing a couple of uh, collections for them and taking them back to the airport I've done all that now and I've come out into what is always horrendous traffic around Manchester Airport after 4pm so what should be probably a 40 minute journey home for me from Manchester Airport uh, has turned into probably close to an hour and a half it is just the way it goes got nothing booked in for tomorrow my own customers may might have something for me, it's a bit early yet. And I'll have a look on the CX, see if I pick anything up. It might be a hazardous load, you never know. Um, I've had some really good weeks the last few weeks, so if I have a slacker week this week, I won't get down about it. It's just the way it goes, it ebbs and flows, this game. You can't hang your hat on anything at all. And we'll just, we'll just, see how the week goes I've had it where I've had a lousy start terrible terrible first few days and then basically pulled a week's worth of money up in the last two days so I try and keep optimistic all the time but I budget my year for 42 weeks of working anyway so that accounts for slap weeks and things like that obviously we don't want them but you're gonna get them aren't you anyway I'll let you know how the week goes. This week we are going to change the format a little bit in so much as that I've decided because I do get comments and I get questions. I get questions asked not just on the YouTube channel, but people will contact me via WhatsApp or sometimes via the Facebook page or the Instagram page because we Anvil Logistics have, are on both of those platforms as well. If you want to check it out, you can always look it up. And what I've decided to do, each week, I'm going to pick out a question that is asked. I normally just answer them direct to the people. But sometimes those questions could be useful for other people as well. So if it doesn't appear, say, for example, on the YouTube channel, then you might not see it. So each week, I will select one of the questions that are asked to me. And then I will read the question. And the answer that I gave... And then, of course, other people in the comments can add their suggestions as well. So, at some point in the video, the question of the week will be inserted. And then, hopefully, people can gain something from it or can add to it. Because I like to think it's a bit of a two-way street, this channel. You know, it's aimed at people who work in this industry people are thinking of coming into it people are already into it and people who are more experienced than me 
might want to add their two pennies worth and you know I take everybody's advice on board sometimes they ignore it sometimes they do my own thing sometimes they do the wrong thing as we know but I always tend to admit when I've made a gaff so other people can learn by my mistakes anyway so that's today written off I will see how the rest of the week goes I'll keep in touch as we go on Gee, it's lunchtime I'm just waiting to be loaded it's Wednesday. I'm just waiting for an ADR load to get ready. So in the meantime, let's have a bit of lunch. A bit of leftover chilli from last night. Would you look at that? Right, I've had my dinner. Very nice it was. Whilst I was waiting to be loaded, and that took 50 minutes, which uh, is a bit of a drag. So it is actually Wednesday. It's a temp today. I think I said it was a temp yesterday, but it's not. It's a temp today. And uh, today has been uh, CX day. My own customer has not been all that busy. And I thought I'd preempt things and see if I could find a job for the morning. And I looked on the Courier Exchange yesterday afternoon and got myself a long wheelbase van job going from down the road to me in Elland. And it was going to uh, the Derby area. And I got it for an acceptable rate. Again, I bid at 130 a mile and the shipper gave it me. And it's not the only bit I put in, but they've accepted that sometimes you've got to pay for a bit of quality. Anyway, I think 130 a mile is the, should be the go-to rate for long wheel bases. I'm sure plenty of people disagree. And it does reflect in the number of bids that get rejected. But anyway, regardless, so I got that job and there's just about to send them a message to say, got work for the morning and they rang me with work but I couldn't do it but never mind I just try and be proactive other than just the usual of like let us know where you're going and what time you're going to get there if there's anything come up we'll let you know so I got myself into Derby and to be honest I thought oh I've cocked up a bit here because delivery went fine it was uh, display material it was going to uh a shop and the fitters were going to put this display together with the television and all of the kinds of bits and bats with it. Pretty simple. Um, handballed it off, but everyone pitched in. It was off in no time. And then I just parked at the car park. It was near uh, Derby County's ground, the place. And I was bidding for work, and it was kind of like, well, I'll go anywhere. I'm not fussed. But I didn't get anything. There wasn't all that much work coming out. What bids I, I put in, I didn't get. And then, fortunately, uh, the day was saved because a hazardous load came up from the Leicester area, which was about 20-odd miles from where I was. Uh, but it was going back to uh, Manchester. So, at the enhanced rate, I didn't mind driving 20 odd miles to pick it up um, I've had to wait like I say for 50 minutes to get loaded but um, they put a little bit more on the job for me because I'm sure they're going to charge the customer and I'm on the way now with 500 kilograms of uh, flammable it is packing group 2 so it is fully in scope and I do have my hazardous flags on the vehicle and I'll be delivering that just after three o'clock and that will be it because um, I've got a decent day's take now so for what I thought was going to be a bit of a lousy day uh, has turned into an all right day and uh, I intend to get home I'm going to watch the match tonight uh, the wife she won't be back till a bit later so I think I'll have to uh, do some uh, cooking. Well, I'll be cooking the van over to the chip. Because <laughs> I'm not cooking. And uh, get myself uh, a bit of a takeaway, I think. Watch the game. See if I can secure some work for tomorrow. Or I might get a phone call from my regular customers. And then we go again tomorrow. And hopefully, fingers crossed... A miracle might happen and England will get through to the final. We'll see. 
in the meantime, I'll just concentrate and drive it back safely and I'll be in touch at the later of the week. Right, it's 11 today and I have got no work booked in today. Uh, my own customers are very quiet, uh, extremely quiet and uh, there's not much to have off them whatsoever. So I thought I'll come on the CX today. I watched the match last night, so I've started later today. No, I had nothing booked in. I'm going to fill the van up and I'm bidding on the CX. So in the meantime, I'm going to do the question of the week. So like I said, I'll pick a question that comes out each week and read it out and then give the answer that I give. And then other people, they might have a comment on it. And this week, pretty simple one. So Big Lurry Biker 1949 asked, I've noticed that a lot of the couriers on here don't have sign written vans. Is there a reason do your customers not like it? Well, Big Lurry Biker, uh, you're pretty much correct. We're all generally, when you operate on the CX in particular and other platforms, you are self-employed and you bid for work off transport companies that advertise jobs that maybe they can't cover themselves or they don't have their own vehicles and they're just simply some kind of shipping agent. But they obviously advertise it in their name. So they might be ABC International Limited. So it's their customer they get the job and then they sublet that work out to people like myself who will bid on a platform like the Courier Exchange um, for the job and then that job will be given to you to do on their behalf. So a lot of them would prefer you not to have a sign written van. Now I do have some signs on my van but they're magnetic so they do say Anvil Logistics Limited on it and the phone number and website but I can remove them because the magnetic stick them back inside the van. And then I will go in, in what effectively is a plain van on their behalf to cover that work. I suppose that they don't particularly want the people ringing you direct in future. Cause I might turn in and my van's pretty modern and it's clean. And the customer might have had a bit of a old banger coming in the day before dirty maybe the driver wasn't particularly well presented didn't have ppe uh, and all that kind of things and they might say oh that van's nice could we ring you in future to do our work so it takes the temptation of poaching away uh, because you're not allowed to poach customers off work that you do on the cx that's a big no-no so that's the reason why uh, you're asked to go in in a plain van because you're working for multiple customers uh, and those customers are generally transport companies so you're going in on their behalf so they would rather you go in with a van with no sign writing on so it gives the appearance that it's one of their vans there you go so i put a few bids in so far today and uh no luck and it is now 25 past nine so it might be a dead duck today we'll see but you never know fingers are crossed i'll give it an hour if i don't get anything in an hour i'm buggering off and doing something else and welcome to another anvil logistics hotel room tour and we've entered through this here into this bleep hallway into this absolutely luxurious suite. A uh, single bed with the world's safest light fitting. Excellent wardrobe. Sturdy looking televisions. Desk, which I will be using to do some paperwork, but the view alone is worth it, isn't it? Look at that. Absolutely. Beautiful. And a bathroom. Which, uh, hello. It's got everything you need, I suppose. It's a bit basic, but it is clean enough. Although it wasn't really all that cheap. I found hotels 
in this area, I'm in Rosyth, and uh, this is about the cheapest I could find. But it wasn't cheap, really. Hello, Mr. Pigeon. Don't keep me awake tonight. Right, well, as you can see, I've ended up in a hotel. It is still Thursday, and it took me a while to get a job. In fact, I gave up and then got this a bit later on late morning and uh, I'd thrown quite a lot of bids in uh, and in the end I was just throwing silly bids in bids that I didn't think I'd get because the prices were high because I kind of came in up and was sulky but anyway I put this bid in and to my surprise they've rang me back and give it me and uh, <clears throat> it's a long wheelbase van job which I've got for £1.40 a mile which is good and it's gone all the way up to Dundee. So it's a, quite a well-paying job, this. So then I was like, I got it loaded. It was uh, it was down as an um, extra on wheelbase van. But in fact, it was five rolls that weighed no more than, well, I don't know, eight kilos each. Um, and it was uh, going to... Uh, what kind of media place? Uh, I think they were backdrops for uh, a film production company. So they're about three and a half metres long. And uh, there was five of them. So they weighed nothing, really. And uh, they're all wrapped up in this really tough plastic. So I just put a blanket over them, strapped them in, and off I went. So just then it was the decision to drive home. And now you can kind of drive home. If you get one pound forty a mile, but I put the destination, I put me home destination as Dundee, and set off. And um, I pulled up the services to use the loo and had a quick look on the CX, and there was a job going from kind of slightly northwest of Edinburgh in the morning to Leeds for a long wheelbase. And it, I looked and it was like 45 minutes away from where I was dropping where it was um, to get there. So I thought I'll bid for that and if I get it, then I'll stay over and bring that back. And I got it and they didn't even, um, they didn't even ring me. They just sent it through. So I accepted it. So I've got a job to lead. So that meant it is worthwhile stopping over, but... I had a devil of a job finding accommodation. I don't know if there's anything going up here at the moment, but lots of kind of issues booked out and, and what wasn't was expensive. Um, in fact, the only reasonably priced hotel I found, I thought I'd got, oh, this is the result. You know, it's like 40 odd quid. Turns out that it was shared. You had to share a dormitory for men and share a bathroom. I'm not, I'm not getting involved in that caper. Uh, Travel lodges were like 110, 120 quid. Um, it was really dear. I even went on Airbnb and again, 130, 140 pounds for an Airbnb. And then I've, I've stumbled on this, as you've seen in the picture and the video. It's very basic. It's very basic, but it is cheap. And although the room is not nothing to shout about, it is clean. I'll give them that. And quite frankly, I've been out for a bit of a walk. I'm not far from the the, big, the bridge. Is it the fourth bridge? I don't know what it's called. I've had a wander um, down towards there. Um, grab something to eat. And I'm back in now. And I am going to do some paperwork using uh, one of my stolen pens from uh, Freddie Fletcher Limited. Get on with paperwork up to date that I've got. Then I shall have a shower. Gone with clean clothes, I hung up in that beautiful wardrobe I've got. And uh, chill out, make a brew. Kettle's next to me here. I brought my own coffee because they supply decaf. Who has decaf coffee? Not me. And I brought my own milk because I don't like this UHT stuff. Apart from that, that's it. Um, I'm not having the breakfast because... Um, I didn't opt for it and looking at the place I don't fancy it either so I'll be uh, grabbing something on the way back down I'm, I'm picking up me stuff at 9am 
and I'm hoping it's, um, what, what Porsche code is it? EH54, you know, I couldn't even tell you the name of the place where it is. EH54, whatever area that is. So it's not, it's not Edinburgh, it's got an Edinburgh postcode, hasn't it? But it's not in Edinburgh. I am about 25 minutes from it where I am in Rosyth, anyway. So, but I might get there early and see if I can chance me out and, and get it away earlier. And then it's going to be, I don't know what, four and a bit hours down to Leeds. So I'll be dropping in Leeds just after lunch and then probably that will be it for me. Unless there's a little cheeky job from Leeds to uh, the People's Republic of Mancunia. So that'll be it for the week. The week itself, money-wise, has been not very good. Um, because they didn't work Monday and then Tuesday I only got some bits and bats off uh, my own customers. And they weren't, didn't add up to all that much. Wednesday was all right. Uh, did okay Wednesday with uh, a decent paying job by CX standards down to, um, you know, why is it, it was only yesterday and I forget already, to DE21 and then picking up a, an ADR job uh, in the Leicester area going up to Altrincham. So that was a good paid day yesterday. Today's good paid on one job and then... I did go a little bit cheaper to go back to Leeds. Well, not massively cheaper. I've done it for 90 pence a mile, which I think to get back down south from Scotland is pretty good. So it's like 200 and odd quid. But when you add up what I got to get here, the cost of the hotel, and over the course of the two days, it's worked out okay. But it was a short week, and I didn't take as much money as I would like. There's no point in sugarcoating it. A little bit less than I'd like. But we go again next week. It has been quiet on the feed. I've noticed people on the forum saying it's been a bit quiet. I've also noticed that um, someone who posts, you know, quite regular on YouTube as a contributor, um, he has been saying he's had a quiet time and he's in London. So it's one of the things you, you can't polish a turd. If it's quiet, it's quiet, isn't it? You just get what you can out of the week. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. Please give us a thumbs up on that button down there. That helps the videos get out there. And again, if you're interested and you want to keep in touch with the channel, subscribe to it. It doesn't cost you anything. It just lets you know when videos are out, puts it onto your feed, etc. And I will see you in the next video. Don't forget, put your comments on. If you've got any questions, put them on. If there's anything you'd like me to cover, again, put that in your comments. And please let me know how you've done this week. Have you found it quiet out there?